Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regaming to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the i7-9700K, specifically some Geekbench results which have popped up onto the internets. And these results are actually very, very impressive indeed, showing a very high single core performance, which easily beats out the 8th generation series of Intel processors. But furthermore, despite the fact that the i7-9700K is missing the hyper-threading, it does still beat out the multi-threading performance of the i7-8700K. So then, the single core score, 6297 with the multi-core score at 30,152. Now, of course, this is a rather impressive score. We'll go into how it compares to other uh, systems in just a moment. But this is with a Z370 gigabyte motherboard. It's an Aurora's Ultra Gaming and with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. So how does it compare then? Well, it does, of course, depend on the rest of the system, but we're going to be going through, of course, rough performance metrics. So the i7-8700K is going to score you around the 5,900, possibly 6,000 points, depending on the rest of your system. That is, of course, their single core score. So that's pretty impressive. But the multi-core score for the 8700K is only around the 26 thousand point mark. It can be around the 2550, uh, to maybe the 27,000 mark. So once again, the uh, 8700K does lose rather soundly here to the i7-9700K, uh, despite the fact that it is missing hyper-threading. But of course, the additional clock speed plus the addition of the two physical cores does help it uh, pip the 8700K to victory. And if you're curious how it compares against uh, AMD's offerings, the um, 2700X will score around the 26,000, the 28,000 range, possibly a little bit higher. Uh, Ryzen, as we all know, is very sensitive to memory bandwidth, so it will really depend on what you're running there, as well as the cooling because of XFR2. And in addition to that, it's going to be scoring around the 5,000 point mark for single core performance. That's once again assuming best case scenarios in Worst case scenario is you're probably going to be a couple of hundred points lower. So that's pretty impressive. Although official pricing has not been confirmed yet, it's most likely you're going to be looking at around the 75 to possibly even 100 US dollars more for the 9700K compared to AMD's Ryzen 7. And of course, with SMT as well on AMD's system, there are probably going to be some instances where AMD's system does still beat out uh, Intel's, but we can only wait and see by testing that, of course. There is also another leak concerning the overclocking ability of these chips. Don't forget, these chips have one key thing that separates them from the 8th generation, apart from the obvious stuff like the additional cores, and that is the fact that they feature a soldered IHS, which of course allows a better heat dissipation. A lot of people took to delidding the 8th generation processors and other CPUs before that, and by delidding, it could drastically improve the temperatures of your system. How much? Well, of course, it does depend on the rest of the setup, how much you're overclocking, but certainly 15 degrees was rather conservative. 20 was quite, well, not unheard of, let's put it that way. But with an all-core overclock on the i7-9700K, we are looking at 5.3 gigahertz, and this does marry up rather nicely with some other leaks we've heard for the i9-9900K, which supposedly was getting 5.5 uh, gigahertz. Some champ managed to get 5.3 gigahertz with air cooling, so it doesn't appear like it was anything special. Uh, the multiplier on the chip was dialed up to 5300, it had an untouched base, and if the uh, voltage being shown in the screenshot is accurate, it's sitting 1.215 volts, which is not too bad. And once again, given the fact that it's only an air cooler, there's nothing special there. It's certainly not even in the realms of a reasonable AIO, let alone like a, a water cooling loop. You can imagine you could probably squeeze a couple of hundred megahertz more out of that. Of course, with the usual caveats of the Silicon Lottery coming into play. Now, I want to move over to a different topic because several of you have emailed and uh, messaged me uh, via Facebook about this particular set of leaks of the RTX 2080 Ti. And I actually did know about them from a couple of days ago, 
but I did figure they were fake. But so many of you have messaged me and asked my opinion on this, I figure it's just, well, sensible to talk about them here. So, a Turkish YouTuber by the name of PC Hukasi TV, hopefully I've got that pronunciation correctly, went ahead and uploaded a video. And in that video, it was pretty simple. Uh, there was a set of benchmarks, which was the RTX 2080 Ti against the GTX 1080 Ti. And these 10 benchmarks showed, of course, that the RTX 2080 Ti was faster, but not by that much. I mean, obviously it did depend on the game, but around 35-ish percent or whatever a performance increase. Now, since then, that video has been removed. And so immediately people were like, well, was it NVIDIA pressuring them for this and so on and so on. But from my understanding, these benchmarks are really fake. Um, and uh, yeah, there was several issues with them. For one, uh, from what I'm understanding, uh, NVIDIA have not actually released the driver yet for people to even test these cards. So it would be a really early beta driver, which would be holding back performance considerably. The second issue is that the chap is testing Battlefield 5 in this instance. So I'm unsure how they managed to get those results. And we also see some numbers looking a little wrong. For example, The Witcher 3 seems to be getting performance numbers which are several frames per second lower than what they should be with, for example, the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. It's very difficult right now to procure an RTX 2080 Ti, and that's putting it mildly. From what my understanding is, NVIDIA are very tightly controlling the supply of RTX 2080 Ti's until release date. And even if you were to be given an RTX 2080 Ti, once again, you do not have the driver which would be indicative of final performance, and IIBs are not seeding yet. Uh, from my understanding, from speaking to a couple of different AIBs. And of course, once again, games like Battlefield 5 are not out yet. So my personal opinion on this is that most likely the benchmarks are fake. And after all, it's not very difficult to kind of guesstimate the performance. I mean, after all, if you're hearing, let's say, the card puts out, I don't know, 40% performance, right? And a game's getting 100 FPS. Well, you can just do the maths and just add like 39% or 42% or whatever to a game. So yeah, I don't particularly believe that there's also no images of the card in the video from my understanding and so on and so on and so on. It's possible, of course, that perhaps he managed to like sneak into a warehouse with his friend late at night and kind of access the card for a few minutes or whatever. And maybe it had identifying stickers and therefore that's why he didn't want to do it. You get the idea, but it's very unlikely in my personal opinion that once once again, these benchmarks are legit. With that said, we do know uh, a couple of other benchmarks which have popped up, but once again, the validity of a lot of the stuff, because even if they were accurate driver, um, even if they were accurate benchmarks, we don't know the state of the drivers. And while we're on the subject of the RTX Touring graphics cards, what about the laptops then? Obviously, if you want to buy an RTX 2080 or 2080 tire, we know the launch dates for those cards, but when it comes to laptops, we have not had much luck wrangling that information. Well, there's a rather interesting couple of articles going around at the moment. I'm going to link them in the video description. And what we can ascertain from this information is that yes, it would appear that we will not have to wait long for the RTX 20 series to come along is actually a list of device IDs which have been posted on GitHub, and this includes the Turing TU-104M1EAB. And this, of course, represents the Turing 104 GPU, and the M, of course, denotes mobile. But what's rather interesting about this is this actually does coincide with another piece of information from uh, NVIDIA, where, once again, we see a device ID of 1EAB, and it is indeed registered at the NVIDIA Corporation. Of course, there are some questions. Will there be any changes from the desktop version? It's most likely going to be a Max-Q design from what we're hearing, so obviously that's going to be great in terms of heat output and so on, but how will it perform compared to the desktop versions? What type of uh, you know configurations are we going to be seeing from the core? What type of memory is going to be involved? And all of those questions, which of course will impact performance, remain a mystery. And we also don't know what lower end SKUs, for example, the 2070 and the release date for that. So, uh, yeah. 
So there you go. With all of that said, I think that's just about it for this particular video because, well, I've got a lot of other stuff to be filming. Just a quick reminder for everyone, I will be heading to Seattle, that's in, of course, the USA, uh, in just a few days time, well actually a week, I'll be heading towards the airport. I am taking with me a laptop, uh, I'm actually being uh, loaned a laptop, a really high-end laptop by HP Computers for the purposes of the trip, it's really cool of them. Uh, it's not sponsored or anything like that. I'm actually not like doing any events with HP. It was just something they kind of lent me, which is really awesome. And on addition to that, uh, I'm going to be doing a couple of interviews while I'm there. I'm going to be meeting up with a couple of friends uh, and a couple of viewers, which you can still probably uh, meet me if you want to. A couple of people have already messaged me about that. You can email me at paul at redgamingtech.com. I'm going to be in Seattle a month. I will still be producing content. There will be an RTX 2080 Ti review hopefully coming up uh, pretty shortly after launch. We've actually got one pre-ordered. Uh, so, you know, that's cool. And that's uh, what most of the money towards the channel that we make actually goes towards like buying hardware and helping uh, put stuff out for you guys. So once again, I appreciate everything that you do for us on the channel. It really does help uh, us produce this content. And obviously, you know, we're nothing without your support. So uh, it really does uh, make me smile that uh, so many of you have been interacting with us, messaging us and kind of messaging me on Facebook and so on. It's, it's really awesome. So anyway, uh, that's enough for that stuff. So, you know, you're not going to be getting rid of me or anything like that. I will still be producing content, but um, I'm going to be going to Seattle just to kind of see, see some friends. But uh, I will still be working, put out news videos. There will still be reviews coming up and so on. So, yeah, just if you, for a couple of days when I get there, I'm probably going to be like KO'd. So it's going to be pre-recorded stuff because otherwise I'm just going to build this on the camera. Uh, graphics cards, good. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's like, you know, eight hours, um, uh, Seattle's like eight hours behind us and I've got like a 10 hour flight. So that's going to be fun. With all of that said, take care of yourselves and, uh, you know, have a great day. Bye for now.